What is your favorite sauce? Mayonnaise? Tomato ketchup? Mustard? This is not a video about sauce, but about academic sources, such as journal articles, topic-specific books, and official reports. But how do you choose a good source? The British condiment Worcestershire sauce has a complicated taste. Part sweet, part salty, part sour, part savoury or umami, and even a little bitter, which we test using the tool of our tongue. When choosing a text to include in an academic paper, we have a different tool. somewhat undignified acronym C-R-A-A-P Craap. No reference to Thomas Crapper, inventor of the flushable toilet. Like a tongue, it tests different aspects of the text's flavour. It tests currency, relevance, authority, accuracy and purpose. Currency tests how recent the text is. This can be seen from the publication date, such as this text on punishments in China. Probably not wholly accurate for today since it was published over 200 years ago in 1801. Tests the subject matter against your own personal research question and considers the target audience. For example, if you were writing an essay on what factors caused the European Renaissance, you may find a popular pamphlet about the Mona Lisa's eyebrows to be an irrelevant distraction and thus reject it as a source. Authority considers the reliability of the authors, publishers and sponsors. What else have they written? Are they qualified? What is their bias? We all have one. For example, if you want to know about the Council of Nicaea, ask a historian, not Dan Brown. In the case of a website, such as this one from Birmingham City Council, information about the publisher can be found under the About link. Accuracy is about how true the text is. You can assess this by measuring it against external evidence and comparing it to other sources. If you find that your text is telling a different narrative from the consensus of scholarship, you need to use it carefully. It could be that it is skewed by the author's emotional connection to a subject or perspective. Check for emotive language, such as ad hominem attacks, that is, attacking the person, not the idea, and a fair and balanced presentation of the competing views. Finally, the purpose of the text will radically affect its academic value. You must consider why the text exists. For example, is it to teach, to sell, or to entertain? In the case of this World War II poster, it is designed to recruit young men to the army, not to report findings of an in-depth survey. 
It is equally important to ask what type of information it is. Objective fact is much more academically acceptable than subjective opinion. Finally, everyone has a bias and underlying assumptions, presuppositions and agendas which influence their writing. Some examples of bias could be politics, culture, institution and personal preference. Would you like to see this tool in action? Of course you would! Here is a text from a university website which gives a brief history of the institution. Imagine you had a research question. What is the history of the University of Birmingham? How current is this information? It was published in 2020 and is still live on the website today, so it is very current. How relevant to your research question? It is highly and directly relevant. How authoritative is the information? It certainly comes from a qualified source, but it is obviously not unbiased, so will probably only give you the positive side of the story. Is it accurate? Yes. The university is trustworthy because it is held to high standards by governing bodies and worldwide academia. This text makes falsifiable, that is, testable, claims such as the first chancellor, the date of foundation, and the first civic university. If any of these were untrue, the university could be sued. And what is the text's purpose? It is openly and clearly promotional material, biased in the institution's favour. So can we use it? Yes! But when writing, make sure you cite it clearly and read an opposing view to balance your work. I hope now you are ready to use the CREARP tool on all of your sources, but perhaps not on your sources. Goodbye.